I want to talk about our Father, and that's really the first thing we're going to say is He is our Father. He is our Father. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, the Bible says this, After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. He is our Father. He's not just my Father. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, He's also your Father. So He's our Father. And so you know what that means? It means like it or not, we're a family. As believers in Jesus Christ, we're a family. The church down the road that trusts in Jesus Christ, guess what? They're part of our family. He is our Father. And the disciples asked Jesus. Jesus said this because they asked Him, how should we pray? And He said, when you pray, say, our Father. And this was something unique to them. They weren't used to calling God Father. They would say, Father Abraham. But they weren't used to seeing God in that light. Jesus brought this... Uh, just amazing revelation of God that you can say God is my father and he's our father and so no matter what our backgrounds have been and what our past has looked like and what we've been through how long we've been believers together we can proclaim he's our father look at the person beside you and say he's our father he's our father And I love that because he says when you pray, that's the way you should pray. That means when I pray in that spirit, I bring you into my prayers. As I'm praying God's kingdom come, His will be done, our Father, I'm bringing you into my prayers. And when you pray that, you're bringing me into your prayers. Because we can all together proclaim that He is our Father. Everyone didn't have the best father. I had an amazing father. I have an amazing father. He's still with me. I understand not everyone can say that. That's why today we're looking at the heavenly father and proclaiming that he is our father. And that first part of the Lord's prayer goes on, our father who is or which are, and that's all it's saying, who is. Our Father is. He is. That's what when Moses said, who do I say has sent me? God said, tell him I am that I am. And that's basically what the Lord's Prayer is saying. Our Father who is. You see, no other religion in the world can say our God is. Because their God used to be, but ain't no more. Because their God was a person. Our God is is because our God came and died for us but he rose again and so we can still proclaim our God is because he's eternal and whatever we need he is he is our father and he is in heaven he's above all He sees all. He knows all. He's in control of all. He is on the throne. He's high and he's lifted up. And he's my father. And he is. And he's in heaven. We could just preach the Lord's Prayer, but that's not the message today. But you've got to first come to that place to know he is our father. Knowing the father is key to our growth. We're not even going to begin to grow if we can't first come to a knowledge that He's our Father. I love this scripture in 1 John chapter 2. He says this, I write unto you little children. And, and, and there's some disagreement here in the way some believe this is worded. He, he talks to little children, young men, and He talks to fathers. And some would say He's merely talking spiritual New believers, believers that have known him for a while, and mature believers. In other words, to say, no, he's just talking about ages. Little kids, young men, and fathers. But what I want to show you today is it actually applies both ways. But it does apply to believers. Look, look at what he says, and we'll, look, and we'll look closer. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Now listen, I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. 
we're not even going to begin to grow until we know him as father. That's the beginning. And you can say, you can say it's for a little child, but you can also say it's for a new believer. And you know what? You can also apply it to someone that's been saved for 50 years, that sometimes we've got to go back and know him again as father. I'm going to show you some of us have lost that perception. Some of us have got off track. We've got just out of whack. And we've lost our perception of, of God as Father. And it means so much we must know Him as Father. We're not going to grow until we know Him as Father. So what does it mean to know Him as Father? First off, to know Him as Father means He is a Father of mercy and comfort. 2 Corinthians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He is a Father of mercy and He's a Father of comfort. My little girl, when she scrapes her knee, she doesn't come running to me. She runs to mom. Because I'll look at her knee and say, it's going to be all right. <laughs> that blood will dry up. <laughs> but mom's going to doctor it up. Mom's going to give it a kiss. And mom's going to make it better. But if she wakes up in the middle of the night, and she... she Sometimes she dreams that there's bugs, you know, like mosquitoes or something. And she's scared. Guess who she runs to, grabs a hold of? Dad. She finds comfort. Because little kids think you're Superman, Dad. They do. They think you're Superman. They look at you, you can open up the pickle jar, you know. Mom can't open it up. Dad just goes, oh, nothing to it, you know. You play with your kids, you throw them around, you pick up things that they're like, how in the world did they pick that up? And all the kids leave the room, you bend over double, you know, because you can't hardly really move. You're like, man, we're Superman to our kids. And they find comfort, they find strength, they find some kind of security in that power. This guy right here, he could really do it, not me, but he could. <laughs> I shook his hand, I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. But they find security and they find strength. And so do we in our Father. Mercies. I don't know about you, but. And I hope that I'm a good dad. I believe I'm a good dad. But maybe all the other dads here can tell me. Man, don't. When you mess up as a dad, doesn't it just weigh heavy on you? Maybe you look back at a decision you made. Maybe you got angry in a moment and something you said. Which I don't know about you, but it weighs heavy on me. Because it's not easy to be a dad. It really isn't. And I know we can't compare a dad to a mom because it's a whole different deal. But there's a big weight that comes with being a dad. There's a big weight that comes. And when you mess up, it really, and I do, man, a lot of times the hardest or the biggest ways the enemy can get condemnation on me is that if I felt like I messed up in some way as a dad. And maybe that relates to some of you fathers. I don't know. But for me it does. But when we can see God as a father, it can really change us. Because my dad, my dad's awesome. And I'm sure my dad... He does the same thing I do. He sees his faults and he sees where maybe he thought he should have done something differently. You know, and those are things that he deals with. But there's one thing I know about my dad. And I say my dad's a good dad. This is what I would say. If all of you today decided you didn't want me anymore. And all of you said we're done with you. All of you said you've messed up. We're, we're finished. We don't want you here anymore. You know what? I know my dad would still think the same about me. I know my dad would still be good with me. I know I could still go home to my dad if everybody else says, hit the road, Jack. I know dad would take me in. You know what? 
He's a good dad. But he doesn't even compare with our Father that's in heaven. The Father of mercies. The Father of comfort. So we need to know a lot of things about God. We can't just know God as judge. We can't just know God as comfort. We can't just know God as holy and righteous. We can't know God just as mercy. We must, we must let God reveal His character to us through the Holy Spirit and through the life of Jesus. Because if I live my life and all God is is judge, then there's times when I'm going to be confused. There's times when I'm going to feel like giving up. There's times when I'm going to feel like my failure, failures are too big for God to overcome. But if I also know God is a God of comfort and a God of mercy and a righteous judge then no matter what happens in my life I know that I can still go to dad and he's going to receive me he's a father of mercy and comfort but look he's also a father of correction he's a father what kind of father doesn't correct their child What kind of father does it correct their child? Listen to the Bible. Hebrews chapter 12. You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God deal, dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards, and not sons. God corrects us and He disciplines us because He loves us. If a dad doesn't tell his son to get out of the highway, then does that dad love his son? But the father loves us and he loves us in such a way that sometimes he has to tell us, you're wrong. And what you're doing is going to destroy you. And the road you're taking is going to mess you up. If we don't know dad as all these things, we'll take, his, we'll take his correction and we'll think it's condemnation. We'll take his correction and well, God doesn't love me. We'll take his correction. You know, and what if my son did that? What if my son, I said, son, put the rattlesnake down. <laughs> you can't play with that. You got to stay away from that. And my son says, well, my dad doesn't love me. He won't let me play with rattlesnakes. We do that to God. My God doesn't love me. He won't let me. He won't let me partake in this. He won't let me view this with my eyes. He won't let me take this into my life. My God doesn't love me. No, He loves you so much. He wants to preserve you and protect you from the things that would destroy you. It doesn't disprove His love. It proves His love. And whenever I speak, if I say something that sort of cuts, you know, from the Word of God, and it cuts into your life, you know, it's not that God is, it's not that God is beating you on the head just to beat you on the head. It's not that He wants to hurt you. It's not that He's doing, it's because He loves you and He wants you to see the truth because we have someone in this life. The Bible says that the whole world is under His sway. He's called the devil. He's called Lucifer. He's called Satan. And Jesus says that He is a liar. He can't do anything but lie. And God wants us to know when we're listening to the lies of the enemy, God wants to speak truth into our life. And sometimes truth doesn't feel good but you know what truth always does it sets you free if you receive it he is a father of correction I talked about the country song uh, this is an older song some of you won't know it but it talks about daddy's hands were soft and kind when I was crying and Daddy's hands were hard as steel when I'd done wrong. Daddy's hands weren't always gentle, but I came to understand there was always love in Daddy's hands. Now, I know it's a country song, 
And all I need is a cowboy hat and a guitar, and I could pull it off. I already got the accent. <laughs> but it speaks pretty true that God doesn't always rose petals and flowers and rainbows in our life. God sometimes allows things to happen to get us on track. Sometimes life just happens and God gets us back on track. But sometimes we have things in our life that God wants to deal with in our life. And we must allow Him because He's our Father. Can I have an amen? Relationship with our Father is everything. Look at your neighbor say, this is everything. This is something that I have never, I never caught before in the word of God. I read the Bible a lot. But I never caught this. It just hit me this week. I was like, I've never seen that before. You see, Jesus was God's son. And Jesus came and he lived a perfect life. He lived the life that me and you can't live. So that he could die for us. So that he could die for us. And so we could receive his life into our life. That we could be called righteous because of what he did. He died on a cross and shed his blood. It was a perfect sacrifice. So that we could be saved. People were healed. People were delivered. People were set free. People were changed forever. People that were hopeless were given joy. People that were blind could see. People that were dead were raised to life. Now, but you know something about Jesus. Maybe here's something you've never seen before. The first words he spoke as a little child. You know what they were? What happened was Jesus went missing. This wasn't the first words he spoke. But this was the first words the Bible records of him speaking. Jesus went missing. And his mom and dad were looking for him. Didn't know where he was. Here's what Jesus said. Luke chapter 2. But why did you need to search? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? He said, you could have just looked one place. I was at dad's house. That's where I was. He was saying, the next time I go missing, the next time you don't see me, just come to dad's house. That's where I'll be. We go on into his ministry. In John chapter 4, the gospel of John chapter 4, verse 34 the disciples thought he was talking about food. And Jesus said, my nourishment, my meat, my food comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Jesus said, I get fed by doing what the Father has called me to do. I'm all about him. As a little boy, he said, you'll find me in his house. As a man ministering in his 30s, he said, I'm about doing what the Father has called me to do. Now, you probably know where I'm going by now. The last words of Jesus. We saw his first recorded words. Look at his last recorded words. In Luke chapter 22, as he hung on the cross. And when Jesus had cried out, with a loud voice, he said, what did he say? Father. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. This spoke into my heart. I had never seen this before. It just never clicked with me. Jesus, miracle worker, life changer, came to set the captives free. Man, ministered and served, called the sinners to repentance. All these things he did. Look at his life. He was about the father's business. He was living in his father's house, about the father's business. And with his last breath, he said, Father, I've done what you called me to do. This should speak into our life today. Praise team, you can come and help me. Our life should be about the Father's business. God didn't save you. 
just to suck you up into heaven. <laughs> he saved you. And he's got a plan for you. And he wants to do something through you. Did you know all around us, probably in our church today, and all around us, there are people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. You know what? He's not their father. But he really wants to be. He really desires to be. You see, you take for granted sometimes. There's a spirit within us that says, Abba, Father, the Bible says. Daddy. And it cries out. Maybe as the word has been spoken today, within your spirit, the, 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 your spirit's crying out, Man, I love my Father in heaven. But there are people that don't know him as Father. There are people that don't know him as Father. And God's got something for you to do so that you can point people to the Father. Can we stand? I really believe what God wants to do today is to refresh your spirit with a new knowledge of the Father. I believe perhaps some of you are here today and all you know is a Father that is judge. All you know is a Father that's hurtful, spiteful, abusive. That's all you know of a father. Perhaps there's some of you today that all you know of a father is someone that doesn't care. Someone that doesn't love. Someone that doesn't show compassion. Maybe that's all you know. Some of you today, you've trusted in Jesus, but you still don't know the heavenly father the way you should. You only know him as judge. That's all you know him as. Some of you perhaps, all you know him as is a father of compassion and mercy. And you live your life haphazardly. The father won't care. He just loves me. And you don't even know the father's trying to bring correction into your life. My prayer for you today is that God gives you a new revelation of the father. It's over and over throughout the New Testament. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the name of Jesus Christ and the Father, the Father of mercies, the Father of all comfort. The Father is scattered out throughout the Scripture. And He wants you to know Him. He wants you to know Him. So I'm going to ask if we just bow our heads right now. And I'm going to pray a prayer for you. You pray however you need to pray. If you've never trusted in Jesus, Right now, right now, right now, you can place your trust in Him. Right now. Just simply ask Him, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I accept your finished work. I believe you died on the cross for me so that I could be righteous before the Father. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Take me. Use me. Mold me. Make me. I want to serve you, Lord. And I pray for you today that you've lost the perception of the Father. You've been running from the Father. You're like the prodigal son. You're living in the pig pen. You don't know that Dad's back at the house waiting on the porch, scanning the horizon every day to wait and see if his son's coming back home. You're like the prodigal son. You've lost your perception of the father. You forgot how much the father loves you. You forgot that the father wants the best for you. You forgot that the father would embrace you today. Today. If you'd surrender your life to him. I pray right now. Come on, help me pray today. I really feel the presence of the Lord right now. I really believe he's ministering to somebody's heart. I feel like there's someone here that's never trusted in Christ. And God's dealing with you right now. You don't even understand at all. But you know that something real is bubbling up inside of you and you want to give Jesus your life. Can I ask you to just, with boldness and with courage, just to step forward right now? And just to come kneel down up here. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Come on, if that's you right now, if God's speaking into your heart, you're ready to receive Him into your life. 
as Lord and Savior. Can I ask you to come? Will you come? Will you come? Thank you, Jesus. Can we have some ladies come and pray? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They're going to sing a few lines of this song. And I just want you to, I want you to communicate with the Father today as we sing this song. I remember my grandfather when he would preach. He would talk about how God would kiss, have, kiss the earth and we'd just get caught right up in the middle of the smack. Some of you probably remember that. I just feel that way right now. I just feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That He's just... Man, our Father is awesome. I just feel like I'm melting. I'm melting in His presence. If you need to pray today, or if you need prayer today, I want to pray with you. There was a couple I spoke to before service about praying for your body, for physical healing. I want to agree with you today as they sing this song. If you'll come forward, let me pray with you. Anyone else that needs prayer, the next two, three, four minutes, can we just let God do what He wants to do? Thank you, Jesus.